The 2-3 zone defense is a strategic powerhouse on the basketball court known for its ability to protect the paint and control the game tempo. Today, we'll delve into a comprehensive guide on setting up and running the 2-3 zone effectively. Let's get started. Before we jump in, a quick note, especially for youth basketball coaches. Running a zone can give you a major advantage because scoring from outside is often limited. However, for long-term player development, I recommend focusing on teaching man-to-man -man defense skills rather than the habits of zone defense. That said, the 2-3 zone defense is a fantastic change-up defense to challenge your opponent. It is set up with two guards in the top corners of the zone and three bottom defenders. Instead of players marking individual opponents, they cover specific areas on the court. This brings me to three weaknesses of the 2-3 zone defense. We have less covered areas on the court, primarily in the high post area and on the perimeter. This makes it vulnerable to outside shots. Secondly, the offense can exploit a mismatch and position their best player in the area of the weakest defender. Thirdly, because players don't have specific matchups, boxing out each offensive player for rebounding can be challenging. But now let's discuss how the zone adjusts depending on the ball's position on the floor. When the ball is at the top, we want our two top defenders to close the gap and prevent the ball from entering the high post area either through the point guard attacking the middle or passing to a player in the high post. If the point guard is a solid shooter, we want the nearer player to guard them while the second defender is responsible for denying the high post. When the ball goes to a wing player, our forward, player 4, helps to defend against outside shots and dribble penetration until player 2 takes over. Player 4 then returns to cover the player in the short corner. Player 1 slides in front of the high post and player 5 takes a step up towards the middle after covering the player on the low block. In this situation, player 1 can choose to stay at the elbow to deny the pass to the high post or take a step up towards the top of the key, depending on which offensive player poses the greater threat. Let's rewind and closely examine the key element in this situation, the forward's momentary help on the ball and the subsequent recovery when the guard takes over to play the ball. This brief assistance from the forward enables the two guards to defend three positions around the perimeter. This becomes even more crucial on a ball reversal or a skip pass. Upon ball reversal from one side to the other, the nearest forward closes out to prevent an open shot. Once player 2 has rotated to guard the ball, player 4 is then bumped back down. On a pass to the corner, the ball side forward steps out to prevent a shot. The weak side forward and the center also shift to the right. The weak side guard denies the high post. Since the focus of a 2-3 zone is to protect the paint, the ball side guard zags a bit towards the middle to prevent penetration or a pass inside. In order to increase the pressure, player 2 has also the option to deny the pass back outside. Even though our goal is to prevent the ball from entering the high post, we must have a strategy if it does happen. Player 5 steps up to guard the ball. Our two forwards pinch in to prevent further damage by denying the ball from getting into the low post. If the offense positions a player in the corner, player 3 must be prepared for a closeout to prevent a shot. The two guards come closer together to apply pressure on the player in the high post, but must also be ready for a quick closeout to each of the wing players. When the ball is passed into the short corner or low post, we apply maximum pressure on the ball and initiate a trap. The offensive player is immediately doubled by the center and the ball side forward. Player 1 takes away the outlet pass and denies the perimeter player. The weak side forward moves across to protect the paint and prevent a pass under the basket. The weak side guard 
is responsible for intercepting a skip pass to the other side of the court. Trapping the short corner is essential, but there are additional opportunities to increase pressure and control the tempo. Another effective trap occurs in the corner when the ball side guard double teams with the ball side forward. The weak side guard sprints across the court to deny the outlet pass, while the center prevents the pass into the paint by fronting the post. The weak side forward must also be prepared to intercept any lob pass across the court. There are two additional spots for trapping, but I recommend using them sparingly to avoid giving the opponent easy layups. The first spot is at the top of the key when the ball is brought up across the half court line. The top two guards sprint up to apply pressure to the ball handler, while the two forwards prevent the first pass to either wing player. The center takes on the dual responsibility of guarding both the high post and low post players simultaneously. The second spot is on the wing. In this case, the forward doesn't bump back down but stays for a double team on the ball. The center and the weak side guard deny the first passes and the weak side forward is primarily responsible for the high post but must also be ready for a closeout in case of a skip pass to the weak side. These two traps should be used as moments of surprise and not more than two or three times per game. In wrapping up our exploration of the 2-3 zone defense, it's clear that when executed with precision, this defensive strategy has the potential to challenge any team. However, it's important to note that while the 2-3 zone can be a formidable weapon, I wouldn't recommend making it your primary defense, especially not for youth teams. Now, let's highlight four distinct advantages of the 2-3 zone defense that makes it a valuable addition to your coaching arsenal. The setup of the 2-3 zone is designed to protect the paint, making it difficult for opponents to penetrate and score inside. Many teams are more accustomed to facing man-to-man -man defenses, making the 2-3 zone a strategic curveball that can catch them off guard. With controlled positioning and fewer one-on-one -on -one matchups, the 2-3 zone has the potential to limit fouls, ensuring your players stay on the court. By dictating the flow of the game, the 2-3 zone allows you to set the pace, disrupting the rhythm of your opponents. In conclusion, while the 2-3 zone may not be your go-to defense, it's a valuable tool to have in your coaching toolbox. Experiment with it, observe your team's strength and deploy it strategically to keep your opponents guessing and your team on top.